Ah, hi and welcome to The Highway Code, uh, an eclectic mix of a variety of different subjects from a variety of different people. And today I've got a crazy Scotsman friend of mine up in the beautiful town of Air, uh, who teaches Muay Thai, Jeet Kune Do, kickboxing and basically any martial art really. Um, and we'll find out more about him in a minute. Graham Leggett on board. How are you doing, Graham? I'm fine, Bob. How are you? Brilliant. What's the weather like in Scotland? It is dull at the moment, but very warm. Slight wind. Ah. So about 18 degrees, between 18 and 20 degrees up here. So it's oh, not bad. Not bad. That's not bad for that. Scotland. Yeah, it's good it's for Scotland. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not uh, raining. It's about, yeah, it's about 20 <laughs> degrees down here. I've been stuck That's indoors. Warm, well, I've been stuck indoors all day, so I know it's sunny out there, but I haven't been under it yet. So, um, <laughs> doing lots of lots of podcasts with the likes of you lot. I've just been cool. speaking to uh, Kay, who's over in Belgium. Um, so, I've just been talking to him about his life as a scientist. Um, but today, we're going to talk, well, I know you've got an interesting background. We've known each other 20 years easily. I don't, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. I know we've known each other a long time. Long, uh, long time. Long, and I know, long time. Yeah, and you're the chief instructor for the Pride Peach Eye Camp. But I am, yes. That, that aside, uh, you also run a full-time gym, which yes. teaches other martial arts. Now, yes, the question people always ask, and it's pretty boring, but it's a good way to start, is um, what got you into this crazy world? You know, I mean, you know, I teach yeah. martial arts, particularly now when a lot of gyms are closing down. That's right. You're yep. still keeping your... You must be doing something different because you're keeping your head above water. What got you into it all? What, what started? Right. All? What happened was I had a group of friends who were into firearms at the time. So they had joined a gun club. And at the time, I wasn't interested in, in guns at that point. So I just let them do their thing. And um, one evening when they finished the gun club, they were sitting in a bus shelter waiting on the bus home when um, a group of lads passed them in a car peeped a horn, waved at them. So the lads, being the lads, uh, waved back. So basically what had happened was the car then done a U-turn, came back, four lads jumped out and battered them all. Oh. One, of my mates, one of my mates at the time was put through a, a, a glass window because bus shelters at that time were glass, not, not perspex. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they were pushed through, pretty traumatised because just young lads at the time. Um... And then one of them had noticed an advert for self-defense classes. So they phoned, phoned me up and said, do you fancy this? And I'm like, yeah, I'll come. That's, that sounds really good. Yeah. And we went. And it was, it was great. It was kickboxing. It was all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I really enjoyed it. And the rest, as they say, is history. So I stuck on. They kind of dwindled away. You know what it's like in martial arts. They kind of yeah. dwindled away their own things they wanted to do. Yeah. And um, I stayed, so I was probably the last one. That, uh, me and my mate Stuart, who ended up joining the army at the time, so he was deployed later on out to the first Gulf War. Oh, um, oh God, that's and, early nine. Well, that's ninety, isn't it? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I stayed, and um, I really enjoyed it. It was great because you know what it was like. We were growing up with Bruce Lee films and right, yeah, flying kicks and high section kicks, and I'm I'm watching these movies with my dad, going, I want to do that. And you learn very, very quickly once you're involved in a, in a decent martial arts gym that it's it's probably not all about the high section kicks and the, and right. then it started to fascinate me that it wasn't just about doing these these fancy kicks and it was yeah it was good I enjoyed it it was great and that's what and got you that's what got you started that's originally what got me started so um, um, them. yeah so that was what the early late eighties early nineties so I would like be that. sixteen at the time. All so right, was, okay. I would be 16 at the time. So that would be, what, 35 years ago. Wow, okay. Wow, yeah. I know I don't look old enough. <laughs> well, we'll come to that later. <laughs> uh, how, do you keep your, how do you keep your boyish good looks and lack of hair? <laughs> Oil of Ule. <laughs> oh, my mother used to use that, yeah. Oil of Ule. It's now called Oil of Ole, isn't it? Or Ule. They changed, they changed the name of it. How do I know that? Why do I know that? <laughs> Changed it at the same time that my mum was annoyed that they changed Jeff to Seth. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, what was that about? I mean, <laughs> I oh, crazy times <laughs> we lived through. She wasn't happy. She wasn't Crazy happy. times. <laughs> <laughs> Your poor old mum. <laughs> so, 
Okay. Um, so you started off in sort of, I guess, traditional martial arts, or it was. I had joined the Krause brothers at the time. Ah, um, now, I knew it was the Krause brothers, but I wanted to. I want. I couldn't remember. So yeah, they were really was, big in Glasgow, weren't they? They were probably the biggest at the time. They had yeah. massive clubs. They had clubs all over the place. Um, they, as I joined them, they were kind of phasing out. That they had been introduced to the Jeet Kune Do at the time. Right. Um, okay. So it was quite early at the time. They were involved with Dan and Asanto, Guru Dan and Asanto at the time. And they were kind of phasing from the traditional kickboxing. They, had, they, they were kind of phasing from the Taekwondo to the kickboxing out right. into the JKD. So I came along as they were in that whole transition period of, of coming away from the traditional yeah. and getting into the kickboxing and then moving to the Jeet Kune Do and the Kali. Right. The systems. So then, so, so you were quite heavily influenced by Jeet Kune Do then in the early years? I was. I was. Was, I was liked, that because of Bruce Lee or was that because you no, liked what you saw? No, I liked what I saw because I thought at the time when I was doing the kickboxing and then they were phasing into the Kali and the, and the Jeet Kune Do, I, I saw a lot of practical use at that point. You know, the whole, the whole um, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless per se. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they were kind of blending a lot of the arts together and, and what was working uh, for us as students. We were learning it all, basically. And then we would grasp what was working for us in a fight. And, and uh -huh. I liked that whole concept. I liked the whole concept of not being stuck inside the box. Yeah. You so know, I was freedom to learn different weapons. As yeah, well. I had the free, I had the freedom to learn uh, the weapons. Um, I had the freedom to learn the kickboxing, the the close quarter combat, um, and I liked that because I could use. I was quite. I got my flexibility from them because I was doing a lot of private lessons and kicking with, with Mike at the time. Right, and right. Okay. We we became really good friends, and we were doing. Um, who who was that? Mike Krause. Mike Krause. Yeah. Um, who, who was a phenomenal kicker at the time. Phenomenal kicker. I remember sparring with him once, and he was practically shoulder to shoulder with me in, in the sparring. The, the range closed really quickly, and he kicked me in the back of the head with a hook kick, a, a heel hook kick. And I thought, I thought it was somebody behind me. Yeah. Hitting me. Yeah. It was him. And I thought, who has that flexibility? You know, you're kicking me at potentially what we would be classing as, as, as elbow range, clinch yeah, range. Yeah. Elbows and, and I thought, this is, that, you know, I thought um, Steve was behind me, uh, playing a joke on me and hitting me back oh, the head. Yeah. But it was it was Mike kicking me with a hook kick, and that fascinated me. I'm the type of person, Bob, that if I see something that works, I, I want to learn it. Yeah, you know, and I learn it and I learn it, and that's that's what I've been like with, with everything, uh, with the martial arts and the music and, and stuff like that. Um, um, yeah, because there's the other side of things that you do is music. We'll come to that. Yes, like, yeah. Um, um, so I was just fascinated by the whole, you can do this, you can blend this with that, and, and, and the whole Bruce Lee influence was, came after that. The, the Bruce Lee influence for me in the martial arts was the, the kicking people in the head and jumping in the air and flying kicks. The, the Jeet Kune Do, it was something that, that Guru and Asanto said to me once when I trained them one of the, the, the first times and it was mentioned in one of his books. It says, um, people, when they come to the martial arts, see the iceberg but they only see it above the water. Yeah. You learn very, very quickly that the, the, the majority of the iceberg is below the water. Mm. And then martial arts became very, very, you know, it wasn't all about the kicking and the, and the flying yeah. kick, high kicks, there was other things to it. So, and that appealed to me. So the, 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 the deeper details of it. So. Yeah, and the practical use. Ah, because yeah. oh. I, I don't think anybody can argue that the, there's, there's martial arts, you know, people are involved in martial arts for, for different reasons. Mm. Um, and martial arts, you know, some martial arts are, are primarily for fighting, and some martial arts are not. Mm. Yeah, and, that, and that's just fact. Yeah, you know, and, um, what what would be, you know, and another analogy that I was I was learning a lot about by then uh, that, that I believe Bruce Lee had said was when he was questioned about his his martial arts and his movies, he says, well. What what looks good in a movie may not may not be practical in a fight, and what's practical yeah. in a fight may not look good in a movie. So you've got to take the aspect of you know I was learning from from my instructors at the time who were you know you've got to separate what what's going to be useful in a fight, yeah, and what's going to be just you know part of the syllabus and part of the training. High yeah. section kicking 
might not work for people in fights. Mm. Do you know, um, unless you're very, very clever at, at, at what you do. And, and well, yeah, it's really like a high level. Uh, well, I, I know, like Terry O'Neill would kick people in the head on when yeah. they were at the jaws, and people used to say that to me, and I say, yeah, but. That's Terry O'Neill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I was the same. I was, the and same. you, you were the same, weren't you? You I kicked somebody same, in the head yeah. when you worked the doors. Yeah, and, and you know that was a way back when the the, the the doors, you know, and and what I was using at the time. I was brought up in the martial arts as 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 what what's effective in a fight. Then yeah. you're going to use it. Yeah, but it needs to be effective. So my analogy was, I can kick these guys in the head because I can kick. I can kick very well. Mm -hmm. I can kick these guys in the head before they get even close to me. I've got 34 inch legs. Yeah, yeah. And um, and when you're kicking people in the head and in a fight, and this that, what you've got to remember is this is this is when when it's past everything else and it's actually a physical fight. Yeah. You know, a lot of people who who don't experience. I did the doors for over 20 years. I've been in a lot yeah. of fights. Um, and what people don't realize is hindsight is a great thing. You know, when you're in that fight in that heat of the moment. It goes very, very quickly. Yeah. And um, high section kicking at a time when people were being violent towards me was working. Mm. But I was the only one out of all the lads. We, we had a good reputation with the police at the time because we we always tried to be diplomatic. But it doesn't always work when you do doors. So, and like, the, which was going to come to my point when, when, <clears> uh, when you work in the doors, we don't want to yeah. give people the impression. You were just kicking people in the head. No, no, not Quite at all. A lot of the time, you'd be we, you'd be having a dialogue with them, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, we did. We we got a really good good rapport. We 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 were one of the busiest pubs in in air in Scotland. Okay. We were we were busy. We were we had queues like nightclubs. Everybody that was out and and at that time, I'll tell you the same. Uh, we worked in a pub called MacArthur's, and and it was busy. But we had a brilliant rapport with the police, and we had a great rapport. We were. The, the people that were coming in and drinking in the place and people always used to say they felt safe in there and, oh. and there was a kind of a kind of joke amongst the community that we were the kind of nice guys because we could the, the our employer at the time picked us hand picked us especially because he said to me at the time the reason i've got you guys working my door is because you can speak and you don't look like and you don't look like dormant yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> we, isn't weren't, it? we weren't at the time the big yeah. lads, you know. Yeah, we weren't like that. And um, but the other flip side of the coin was, if it hit the fan, we could also fight. Yeah, but we always yeah. used that as a last resort, and and we could speak to people, and and we we built up. I mean, even the guys at that time who were causing a lot of grief with us, um, still to this day come to, come up to me and stop me in the street and say, we, "You guys were fair." You know, you were one of the nice guys because you, you you spoke to us. So they they, they had a, a bit of a kind of, you know, respect for us because we really respected them. But they knew that if they caused any grief, yeah, then it, it probably wasn't going to end good for them. And it, the, the thing is, uh, if you you remember back uh, back in the nineties when uh, you know all the books were coming out on Dorman yep. and Hard yep. Men, and it was all about yep. the it how, was. Many, how many fights have you had and all of this sort yep. of stuff. Whereas one of my students, he's, he's basically reflecting what you've just said. He said, yep. if you've had 50 fights working on the doors in a couple of years, you're not mm -hmm. a good doorman. No, no, you need to, you need to speak. The, I mean, we, at, at the time, we were, the only, we were probably the only doorman at the time that, that had that good a reputation with the police. They invited his nights out. Oh, so, and that would never <laughs> happen back then, would it? Would never have happened back no. then. No, because, And the police at the time... You know, um, they, they were decent police. They knew, you know, they knew the bad because you're always going to get bad doormen. Yeah, you're always oh. got and everything. You, you know, you got that kind of flip side of the coin. But the problem with doormen at that time was if you had a couple of bad doormen, everybody was tagged with the same brush. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, um, oh, you're a bouncer, you're a bouncer, and, and you, you know. But but we were very well known in, in here, and and it was busy. Here was busy at that time, and we were very well known that, that we weren't like that. But we could, you know, if if any any hassle happened in the bar, it was dealt with very very quickly. Some people used to come up to me at the end of the night and say, um, you know, for because the the whole racing in, in here obviously we've got the race course. Right. Yeah, race. Right. Yeah. That was a really really busy night, and you'd no bother. And you used to say, well, actually, we did. You just didn't see it. So you it was dealt with very, very quickly. 
And the guys at that time, we were really, really good friends. Still are. Don't see a lot of them as, as, as much as I would like. But we used to go for meals and, you know, and, and well, we would well, be Yeah, I've been up the way a few times. And I, I, yeah. it's obvious how people know you, you know, because yeah. wherever we've gone, people have been chatting away <laughs> to you. Yeah, and yeah. You've always had a good way with people generally. You know, your ability yeah, to talk yeah. to them. And when we've yeah. gone to I mean, I remember that time we went for a Chinese when I first met you and we went out that and it kicked off in that Chinese. <laughs> it was brilliant. Because we, <laughs> we looked at each other and we knew it was going to kick off. And we it, knew it was the top of the top. We were the only it. two people in the restaurant and you was going <laughs> to kick off. And, and, I, and the way you handled it, because we didn't fight with anybody. There was nothing like no, that. No, we didn't fight with anybody. Uh, but it was, yeah. Yeah, it was your ability. You also, I think I remember rightly, you were calming the staff down because they were terrified. They were terrified because it kicked off really badly. Yeah, I mean, the guy smashed the plate. And you, and you heads turned around to me. You turned around to me and said, welcome to air. You know, and I, <laughs> I said, I went, it was almost like, you know, I went it was almost like one of those... You know those movies where everything slows down? Oh, yeah. It was really about us, but we're still eating. We're meal. We're still eating. <laughs> we were like, oh, there they go. There they go. It's off over there. Yeah. I suppose we'd better go after of this chicken ball or go and help them. <laughs> and <laughs> I went into the toilets to see if the guy was all right. Like, and he, he did off. that, right? Yeah, and he had rice in it. Yeah, he's... Yeah, I was laughing enough. Please and, don't break the same way in the movies. Oh, it was so funny. Uh, <laughs> that was like my introduction to nightlife and air. And that was in a yeah. Chinese restaurant. Welcome to the restaurant. <laughs> Welcome to the rest. I mean, God, God knows what it must have been like in the pubs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, I think, no, I think, um, you know, if you've got that kind of demeanor where you can settle arguments and they also know that if... if that doesn't work and it comes to a fight and they're they're probably not gonna you know <laughs> do well. <laughs> um people have a respect. They didn't and at that time all the all the bouncers at that time, you know, the nightclubs and the pubs, we all knew each other. Yeah. And we ended up with a radio link. So what we used to do was, you know, if any of, of the girls were out, you know, wives and girlfriends at the time, they were all looked after. They did skipped cues and they, they got in and they were and I knew that if they were in a pub the lads were gonna look after them. Yeah. But the other thing was if they caused grief in our bar, we just radioed the other bars and didn't get anywhere else. Yeah. So yeah. it became really apparent that, that nobody in the town wanted to really cause any bother because when they're going to get into nightclubs later on. Yeah, they're going to. So it was a, that's a really good way of doing it. It's a good it? way. Everybody was friendly. We all got on well. Um, and, you know, it was, it was just a really, really good place to go. I mean, I had a girl... I had a girl contacted me through Facebook who used to drink in the bar and she says, um, my my oldest daughter is now 18 and she's going out into pubs and air. She says, and I'm absolutely terrified mm. because I don't trust the I don't trust staff with her in bars yeah. the same way as I felt safe oh, back yeah. then. Do you know? So the whole door the whole thing's changed, and I'm quite sure everybody that's that's worked the doors for as long as I have will agree. The, the door industry changed really, really. With the really. SIA, wasn't it? When the SIA... The SIA uh, my firm belief is the SIA killed off the pub industry. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the standard the standard of doorman is, is pretty awful now. It's um, not good. It's and not it's good. very much... There's no disrespect. I mean, I've still got friends who do doors. Yeah, yeah. But... but you know I mean, but... They're, um, they're the original... Yeah, I mean, I was out with one of my best friends in a nightclub and two girls come up to me and says, can you help us? There's guys hassling us. There was mm. eight doormen in that nightclub. But they came to us. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you like, see, that, that's the thing when is, really, the that's thing when is, it really got me. Yeah. They really got to me because I thought... <sighs> yeah, the SIA, you've done the... All you're doing is ticking the boxes, aren't you? You're doing a course. Yeah, and... And they asked, they asked me at the time, when we did the SIA badge, they asked me at the time to do some of the practical work for their self-protection because they didn't yeah. do it. Yeah, that's it. Well, well they, says, I'm, quite, I'm quite happy to do that. I'll speak to you and we'll, we'll do that. And he says, right, so here's the guidelines. And I went, what do you mean guidelines? Oh, there's huh. got to be guidelines. I said, you've just asked me to do your self-protection, your, your hands-on self-protection with the lads. So what, what do you mean? Oh, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to do this. That's not how, I'm gonna, that's not how this works. No. Nah. You know, no. if you ask me to do self protection, I'm going to I'm going to teach you self protection. Uh -huh. But they had all these guidelines, which is just you know, it's reading the the handbook is just 
I think it has to be written by people who have never been in that situation. Well, I think, I mean, I've, I've met one or two SIA trainers in the early days because uh, they asked me to work with them um, in yeah. Birmingham. And they they were so restrictive and they really didn't have yeah. they it's weren't people cool. they weren't people with hands on experience. No. Uh, you no, know, you, you were talking about just simple things like you know the links you had with the other pubs and clubs. Yeah, really important. Yeah. You yeah. all know each other, and you, right. you, know, you didn't you didn't have to plan that or create guidelines. It was obvious. Right. It was common sense. It's just common sense. Yeah, and and you also know, at the end of the day. You know, when I went and did the doors and nothing happened, brilliant. Yeah, that's a great. For nothing. I get my money for nothing. We had a we had a thing at the time because we were we were quite highly paid back then, and um, and that was going back a few years, and we were highly paid. And and somebody said to me once, "You don't get you, you get paid a lot of money for not doing much." And I said to him, so my answer to him was, "We're not paid for what we do. We're we're paid for what we might have to do." Yeah, exactly. You know, when we're standing here and deterring people and, and arguing with people at the door and doing this, that, the next thing, that's all very well. But when you're suddenly faced with, you know, a, a, a large group of people who have managed to get into your pub or a group of rugby players or, or whatever, and then that kicks off, then, you know, we, we, we were caught short once because we ended up, because we didn't let let's, large groups of men into the, into the bar like no. uh, you know like stag parties and yeah. stuff yeah. Um, but they got smart and they were kind of sneaking in in twos and threes mm. so it ended up that we were caught short in a very busy night and we ended up with two stag parties and who ended up fighting uh, and it was one of the biggest fights I've ever ever been involved in yeah. but at that time you know my mates who did the, the pub next door and the nightclub next door if they saw that there was none of us on the door they came and covered our door they knew there was something wrong yeah yeah, you know, and the guys next door came in and helped us, and that was a big fight. The girls, the, the glass collectors at the time, uh, who were young, and um, they were crying because they thought we were getting beat up. Ah, right. So okay. That's how big this this fight was. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and and we dealt with it. Um, and some of the lads came to us the next few few nights um, and apologized to us. But the the point I'm making is, that's what we're paid for. Would you, the guy who's just questioned me being paid a lot of money for the job I do because I don't do much, would you have been able to, in that circumstance, well, manage to, to deal with that? No, they wouldn't. Of course they wouldn't. They wouldn't do it. Or, or what happens is they go and they do this job, and it's a great job, and you know they, they're, they're chatting to girls, and it's great. And then when it kicks off big time, they, they don't want to go back. Oh God, no, no, that, no! That's not what I signed up for. Well, what actually did you sign up for? Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. You're potentially well, a peacekeeper. You have to yeah. protect public. Look, I know so, you. Ca you've you've even worked, <laughs> not not deliberately in a in a club in Birmingham when you came down. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, we did. I, I we wasn't did. there. I mean, I, was, I obviously I saw yeah. it before, but that evening you all went dressed up and you went into... Yeah, with kilts and everything. It was a fight. You, you I had fights. Fight. The big night, yeah. So you had so, like six or seven Scotsmen in kilts. In kilts. Uh, in, yeah. a pub, uh, in a club in Birmingham. Yeah. And it kicked yeah. off. And you it guys off the dome in there, didn't you? We did. There was Ed's weapons involved at that time. <laughs> um, and we helped, it. we helped. We were in the VIP area, but we decided to go a walk uh -huh. just to see the nightclub. Huge nightclub. Yeah. Oh, it's huge, yeah. Uh, Oh, a massive nightclub. Um, yeah, 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 crasher, that? That, sorry? Was it called the Gate Crasher, wasn't it? Was it was the Gate Crasher, yeah. 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 And uh, we had went a walk, because we'd fight us fighting on your show. That's, That's why right. we were there. Yeah. That's right. And um, we noticed that the doormen were struggling with a load of lads, so we just, it's just instinct. We just yeah. kicked in and we helped the doorman. And, and later on, when we were back up in the VIP suite, um, the manager at the time came and bought us all around the drinks to say thank you, because <laughs> what he said was, which is probably what I would have said if it was my lads being helped out with, with a group of lads up, up from England and Scotland, um, he said, you didn't have to do it. No, and you I didn't. said, no, we didn't. And there was nice, um, and... But it's I can't have it in my conscience not helping somebody. I've got to help people. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. you know, it, 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 I mean, it was a massive tussle at, at the, one of the bike fire exits. But I couldn't have that. I couldn't walk past that and and have that in my conscience that I couldn't do some. It's just an instinct thing. I've done the job for that long. Yeah, and that that's rare because 
a lot of people do martial arts and they train to a high level. I, and yep. you, know, you know the sort of people I'm talking about. Yep. And they yep. wear the belts and they wear the geese and yep. they've got the T-shirts. Yep, that's right. And at the moment there's a sniff of violence, they're gone. Yep. Uh, all yeah. their bottles gone, you know. Absolutely, absolutely happens all the time, and I've seen it in Dortmund. And this is this is the this is the value of of having somebody like yourself teaching martial arts because you've, yeah. you know what it's like to be in a situation where there's pressure and violence. Well, that's right. Yeah, we have we have we have the violence thing. I mean, back in the doors when I started the doors, you know, I get the job. They offered me money to do this job. My friend said you need to get this guy in. They gave me a job, and a fight kicked off. Mm. Um, and what they did in those days was they all looked at each other and they said to me, Jim, there's a fight there. Well, go and get and I went. And they all went, oh, oh he's went. He's went <laughs> on his own. You know, we need to get him. You need to get him. So that was the kind of test back then. They, they kind of, once a fight started, they, 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 they let you to see what you were going to do. I want to ask you a question, right? I think yes. I know the answer. Um, we want to... Obviously, you want to avoid fighting whenever you can and confrontation. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Every, 100%. That's what self-protection is yeah. about. Protect yourself. Don't even get into the fight. But once yeah. you're in it, do you find that uh, you're quite happy with it? The, there's, you know, because what I'm saying is about, you know, there's this big thing about uh, fight or flight, adrenal dumps, all of that stuff. I, I, yeah. What do you think when you go in? When you, you've seen the fight and you go, all right, I need to... I need to get involved. What happens in your head? So absolutely nothing crosses my head when I see a fight. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Brilliant. Nothing. I've had this. I a fight, with a number of I just go, it, it seems to be, you know, I, I was seeing a girl at the time when I did the doors. Um, my, my current partner Sandra, who you know very well, obviously. Yeah. Um, she says the same. She says, um, "I can tell by your face that there's something happening because my whole demeanour changes." You know, if I, if I sense that there's going to be a fight or if somebody's going to be trying to attack me or, or whatever. Um, and it's just, it's an instinct reaction for us. Yeah. If I see a fight, I don't go, oh, right, there's a fight. I'm just, I'm already there. I was always the first one. <laughs> I was yeah. always the first one there. But that's um, rare. That's really rare. <laughs> we, we've talked about this a yeah. lot. And when we have people, you know, when people are teaching self-defense, which we don't yeah. like to use, but no, I, I never use the term. I no, think that no. was you that taught me that. We never use the term self-defense because let's be honest, I, I cringe at some of the things that come on uh, social media. Yeah, I mean, because people people believe what they're getting taught, and I'm just yeah. thinking, you know, this is going to get people seriously hurt, and yeah. it's going to be, it's going to get people killed. Yeah, uh, you know, and you know, a lot of these guys are teaching. Um, you know, edged weapons and how to defend against them, and and girls in in the street are no different from men. They they actually are different from men because, and I'm not being derogatory at no, all. No. But if I am attacking Sandra, I'm stronger than her. Yeah. So I've got to teach her um, an act of violence if I am violently attacking her to mm. protect herself. All yeah. your wrist locks and all this. Yeah. They are never, ever, ever going to work on a... Because what you've got to remember is people are teaching girls um, self-defense when they're all in a controlled environment with their friends and talking about yeah. harm, Denise Enders, and that's not how a fight works. No. And it was you, I think, on, on the first self-protection seminar that I did with you that installed that we have to create the violence in the class yeah. if it's that kind of seminar. Because, you know, the whole awareness thing is, is the way forward. You know, I teach my five-year-old daughter that she, she, she doesn't cross the road unless she looks both ways and stands at the curb. That's self-protection. It doesn't matter if it's a fight. It's, it's protecting her. Yeah. And I've always brought her up. Me and her play games when it comes to self-protection. Because yeah. I don't want to be bullied. Yeah. I don't want to be bullied at all. So no. we teach her how to go and get teachers. And this is what I teach in my kids' self-protection class, you know. Ev um, you know, evasion and and uh, getting to to teachers and, yeah. and doing this and, and and trying to avoid situations. You know, if you see yeah. common, the, the common, sense. Group, common, common sense, common sense, just avoid. Yeah. yeah. But there's nobody. There's no parent in this world that's going to disagree when you when your child has no option of escape. They can't get to to their teachers. They can't get to a grown up. They're yeah. in that playground on their own and somebody is physically, violently attacking them. Yeah. There's only one other answer to that. Yeah. You know, they have to protect themselves. So they have to, they have to be able to protect themselves if they cannot escape. Mm. 
you know. So this is I have a, a massive disagreement with a lot of people, and, and well, um, there's a lot of martial artists out there, martial arts clubs that are doing <coughs> the opposite of what you were doing, aren't they? You know, they yeah. building false confidence in their students. Yeah, of course they do. they do, and it's not going to work, and it's it's. You know, and the other thing is that, that we try and teach, and, and one of our lads, Mark, who you know very well, he's big on it, and he's done the doors for as long as I have. And one Mark, of, Mark Boyle, big, yeah, Mark Boyle, yeah. So he's he's one of our seniors down at the gym, and when we're doing self protection classes, he's big on the whole mental attitude. Yeah, yeah. Which is another trait that you taught us at the time, because some people talk a good game, but when it kicks off. That there's there's only a certain amount of people that can that when it kicks off that the technique is going to stay in their head. Yeah. Because sometimes everything that you learn, and it's the same with ring fighting. I mean, oh, I've, absolutely. I've seen fighters yes. that are brilliant fighters, and you'll have seen this as well, Bob. And you see it with professional athletes as well. You know, they're brilliant fighters. They spar really well, and then they get into the ring, and you're going, "What's he doing?" Because it's came out of his head. Yeah. It, it's difficult. Um, and fighting's the same in a, in a controlled sport yeah. um, with a whole mental attitude. Um, but if you've not got the mental attitude um, when a fight kicks off, because it's hard. Fighting's hard. Well, I mean, People don't you, believe you. Yeah. I mean, you've just said it. If you think you've trained for a fight, a professional fight, yeah. uh, so you, and it's in a controlled environment with a referee, yeah. doctors, yeah. everybody's yeah. there to protect the fighters, That's right. That's right. and you still bottle it. How much more difficult is it to do it's, when it's, it's in a super very, super It's super. very, very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. This is what I say to people. Just because you can fight in the ring doesn't mean you can fight outside, you know? Completely different. Yeah. I mean, I did the doors for over 20 years. So you know. I've been a lot of fights. I know, I know the difference. Um, you know, I can use techniques that are similar to the martial arts. At the time, I was, I was high-kicking people, you know, in the head. Um, which is, but, that, but that says a lot about your mental state, you see, because if you're yeah. if you're in a position where mentally you're stable, then you can do anything you want because you're not in a state of panic. So you think, I mean, yeah. I reckon you probably, uh, and I might be wrong, but I get get a sense that you probably learned something in the gym and went, I wonder if that would work on the doors. And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, back I mean, at that time, back at that time, of course you did, because yeah, when something. you're young, you want to try it out. But a lot I mean, of people don't, do they? Because, no, no. you know, those are the doormen that are hiding in the yeah. toilets when it kicks off. And I've, knew, I've known a few of them. Um, <laughs> you know, coming out with their mobile phones. And crew, no, no, no names. Right. No names. Yeah. <laughs> we'll name, we'll have Was a separate a fight? Yeah, there's no windows left in the bar. We'll um, have a, a separate show to name and shame those people. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we can't do that. No, uh, no. I know. No, it was just, I mean, I was 19 when I first started doing the doors. Yeah. So I was this young lad amongst these older guys who was doing martial arts and um, in a fight kicking people in the head. Do you know? I bet they'd never seen it before. No, no, they didn't. And it became a bit of a running joke when, when sometimes the, the police, you know, had, had came to the door and said, right, we need to take statements. Um, a guy's claiming he's been hit in the head. And, and the lads were saying, oh, it must have been that guy that fell in the ground. And some <laughs> time and they went, no, he was standing up at the time. And all the boys were like, well, do we look as if we can kick people in the head? You know, so, but you learn, you know, I was this young lad when I first started the doors. And, and the lads will tell you, it was, you know, I, was, I had that bravado. Which I, I, have, you I still, have you still got it? I've still got it. Not, not in it. You know. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I probably have. I've got that kind of. I've probably got that. Not, not like the way I did. I was when I was doing the doors because I thought, right. you know, this, this probably isn't right. You know, I'm not giving people a lot of chance, and I'm, I'm being brutally honest now. And it wasn't, you know, kicking people in the head and and doing this, and then it got got to the stage where I, I just kind of grew up, probably. And I said, um, okay, yeah, you know, I, I don't need to do this anymore. You know, I don't yeah. need to prove. Everybody knows who I am. Yeah. You know, I was threatened once by a guy. I was threatened by me. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, because a guy, a guy, you know that story. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get so I bet my friend Graham Leggett down. He does martial arts. Oh, do you know Graham? Yeah, I know him really well. <laughs> yeah, you're, right. You're actually talking to him. But, um, but uh, you know, it's it, it got to a stage where I thought, you know, I don't need to prove to anybody. 
do you know, and when people were, were inviting you in car parts for fights and back in the day and stuff like that, you, you learn very, very quickly that you probably don't need to take no, the real piece. You want to get out of this sort of, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, and I used to kind of diffuse the situation probably with a lot more patience later on than I did previously. And I remember the lads at the door, because you remember these, you'll be the same, Bob, you remember these, you know, in this mass of battleground things, unsterile things stick with you. Yeah. You know, and I was kind of talking people out of fighting and, and guy, the guys were saying, I remember the day where you were. <laughs> and you, you grow up, don't you? You grow up and you, and you learn that it's not, not probably a great idea. No, to... and, and, that, and that actually uh, violence comes, it's the last thing, really. It means if you have yeah. a fight, it means you've failed in all the other levels of communication. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and violence can start very, very, very quickly. Very, yeah. very quickly. And it can, it can start from the, the, the trivialist, you know. Oh, yeah. Very, very oh, well, yeah. I mean, that, that's why you know, we're, 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 we're potentially dealing with the drunken public. Yeah. All the time, yeah. all the time, and um, you know, and and I used to see people who were absolutely great guys, sober, yeah, and a completely just a different person. We we drink in them, and it didn't take much for fights to start. No, no, you know, and 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 you know, you you had to be very careful back then because um, you know, a lot of fights. It's, people people back in those days. They got involved with fights when they, they really didn't didn't have to. No, no. You know, we, that was back in the days when our first radios, you had to physically hold them in your hand and hold them to your ears. Oh, there was no piece of big walkie Yeah, talk. you had to. You know, there's an, you, we're in a we're in a bar that's, that's got loud music and it's like you can't hear anything. You know, there was no earpieces. There was no earpieces. Yeah. And um, radios were just an absolute nightmare. When they gave us earpieces, it was like this is great. <laughs> yeah. You know, there was no CCTV back then. No, no. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was a hard, it was a difficult, difficult job. Mm. But we, we, um, we probably enjoyed it at the time. I think, I think that comes across. Right. I, I think you know, the other thing now, you know, like you say, you you've sort of grown up, you mature. Uh, I do. And yeah. You're not working in that industry anymore. No. But, but in a sense, in a sense, you are because you're now passing on the skills. Yeah, in you've the, got to pass that on in a safe environment. Yeah, you, you you grow up very very quickly and realise that that's probably some of the things that you you, you dealt with back in the day. Probably was no other way yeah. to deal with things. Uh, yeah. You know, and certainly, um, you know, and then I then my my daughter came along, and um, I, I decided that I had had enough, and I was kind of fed up with people saying I'm going to give up the doors, and then next year they would still be there, and yeah. I'll, yeah. I always had this philosophy that if I said I was going to give up the doors, then I, I would just hand my week's notice in, and that was me, and I did that. Yeah. And, it, 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 and then the values changed because I worked the doors for over 20 years, um, leaving leaving my family at Christmas to go and work the doors and, and, yeah. and yeah. You know, missing out on a lot. And then suddenly I had this little girl, little baby, and I was, I was sitting in at night watching Disney. With, with my family and and I thought you know this is this is where it's at now the, the doors had its time and I'm not I don't miss it no. it was changing the SIA had came in yeah it wasn't really the same job and no. um, people people changed because it used oh, to be I've if you had I've heard that from friends of mine friends of mine in, yeah. in the Midlands and they send the same uh, thing you know it, it changed you know if, if you had a, a a square goal back in the day you know and, and you fought with these people um, they, they came back the next week and said, "I'm really, really sorry." And probably a week after, they were, they were behaving themselves and they were back in the pub. Um, that that doesn't really work. That doesn't happen now. And the, the the job changed. Yeah. And then I just didn't. I, I just didn't want to be there anymore. I was doing the doors with my mate at the time. We'd been asked to go. Um, a friend of mine who owned bars had bought a bar and, and decided that he wanted um, some of the troublemakers that it would involve with the bar out. And he asked me and my friend to do that, and we did it. Mm -hmm. And it became quite a nice little bar, and, and we did that for about a year and a half. And then I thought, you know, I just don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. I don't want to do doors anymore. I just there's, well, there's more. Like you more see, you've grown up, there's more to it, isn't there? There's more. And yeah, family. Family is important to yeah. me. I've got, I've got a close family, and and um, and and even my gym's like a family. Yeah, you know, well, I'm I'm, come on to that. It now. sounds a bit. Yeah, it sounds a bit cliche, but it's true. No, no, no. I was talking about this to um, somebody on another <clears throat> podcast, and uh, I was, it was 
and it was Lee, uh, one of my lads who teaches for me down in South. Where, where he no longer teaches yeah. Yeah. a few years ago. He came on Facebook and he said, because somebody said, how do I join your club? He said, with yeah. the prior PHI, you're not joining a club, you join a family. We're yeah, it's a, a fam it's a family. And, and, you know, the parents who don't train in the gym, they're, they're great. Yeah. You know, so, and they're, they're as much a part of the gym. And it, and it shows because when we went into lockdown, you know, I was, I, I, we, we were quite fortunate because a, a lot of people have support, supported the gym. You know, we're, we're, we're doing our online stuff. We're doing classes online. So you're, doing, you're managing because you've got a full-time yeah. gym. And you've only yeah, well, that's, you know, on, haven't you? You've only sorry? just recently, I mean, you've always taught full-time, but you've yeah. now, the first the time, gym's you're all yeah. dedicated yeah, to practice. travel. Yeah, and, and the, the students and the, the parents have been absolutely brilliant because we're doing, we're doing the classes online. We're giving kids their quizzes every week and, and, and doing things like that for them and, and uh, most of them have, have stuck by the gym which is great because um, you know it's difficult yeah, I mean this is not what it's it's because it's not just about the money it's about the connection it is, it is. and, I, and I'm, I'm a firm believer if I can do people favours then I'll do them favours yeah. sometimes it comes back to slap me in the face but um, yeah, but you know, I'm not here to you know, I don't, I don't like ripping people off because back in the day when I wanted to do martial arts, I was unemployed. I didn't have a job. Yeah. My sister paid for all my training. Uh-huh. It, it was like an old martial arts movie. Me, me and um, the lads still laugh about this because it's like an old Chinese movie, but it's true. But my sister paid for all my kit. My sister paid for all my um, training. So if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't, be able to, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah, and then. Yeah, and then my instructors at the time, there was a, a shopping centre in Glasgow called the Savoy Centre. I believe it's still there. And uh, they had a skateboarding shop in there. Oh, Professional right. skateboards. I mean, they were a lot of money. Yeah, we yeah. used to build them. So what I used to do was I travelled from here in the first train. And um, I worked in their, their skate shop store. And then my mate Jim, Jim Mackay, who was my training partner at the time, he met me at half past five. And then we walked from there to the gym in Glasgow and we trained. We got the last train home. And I did that five days a week. Yeah. But I didn't get any money for it. it. didn't pay me for it. But it paid for my training. Yeah, so training. Yeah, so yeah. that's why that's why probably excuses don't work for me. If you want to do something, you just get off your Oh, you will. Absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. I no. did it. Yeah. I didn't yeah. drive. I mean, we were, me and Jim Mackay were walking. We, we didn't drive at the time. Yeah. Huddled under golfing umbrellas with the rain going slit sideways, which is probably summer in Scotland. Yeah. To get to a train. Yeah, that's a good summer in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, that's a good summer. But that, and, and people say, why did you do it? Because we wanted to do it. We wanted to train. Yeah. Well, so I when used people to, say, yeah, yeah, I can't make the training, I can't do that. Excuses well, don't work. Really, I get lads who'll say, oh, I can't get to the gym because the trains are a bit late. And mm -hmm. I've gone, it's three miles to get to my gym from where yeah. you live. Just yeah. walk or cycle. Well, we uh, walked. I used to cycle um, from South Shields to Sunderland when I was like 15, 14, 15. Yeah down the coast road in all sorts of weather. Yep. Seven or eight mile, might be a bit more to the to the dojo. Train at the dojo yep. for a couple of hours and then turn around and cycle back with no <laughs> lights on. I know, I know. <laughs> Along the I know. coast road. Um, and I used to do that like four or five times a week. And people used to... I, I mean, I did that five days a week. I worked in that skate store five days a week. Yeah. And we get the last train home, which at that time was 11 o'clock. Yeah. But if you want to, it's like you say, if you want something... I think that's the, you know, it's, it's the age old adage. If you want something, um, hard, this is, this is a kind of analogy I try and install even into the kids when it comes yeah. to anything. If you want something, you know, I, you know, if you want something, just get off your backside and work for it and you'll, and you'll get it. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's, that's my analogy and it could be anything. Yeah. And it's just a matter of, um, you know, you just got to keep going. Yeah. It, 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 there's yeah, too it, many it, excuses now. Yeah, Oh, Captain Hedges that. said the other night, the other day yeah. to me, uh, up in Balata, he said, he said his big philosophy was, it is as it is. It is as it is. That's, it is what it is. Yeah, you so, know, we could, you know we if something goes problems. wrong, it is what it is, get on with it. And he broke his neck. Um, oh, oh, there you're back again. You, you vanished for a second then. Yeah, I um, believe there's a power problem. I'm going uh, to need to move it. Okay. Um, and he was saying exactly the same thing as you. He broke his neck a couple of years ago doing jiu-jitsu yeah. over at Aberdeen. Broke his neck properly. Uh, yeah. Lost yeah. All the feeling down the right-hand side of his body. And he's had numerous injuries over the years. Because yeah. you know Captain, He's mad. He's brilliant. Yeah. Mad. He's not scared of a fight. He loves a fight. Yeah. He's yeah. a mad Kiwi. 
And uh, and he and he just went. I just thought, well, is it? That's what it is. I'll just get on with it. And got himself back to. to he said, I'm not at full health. I can't be. I've had a broken neck. He that's said, right. I'll be a bit more careful. But he said, when yeah. the lads turn around to him and say, I've cut my thumb, I can't come. Yeah, through. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. You're turned up with, you know, you turned up with broken toes, but you've got hands. You can just box. We're mixed martial yeah. artists. Punch. Yeah. But it's, you know, we had this conversation when all the gyms were going into lockdown. There was a lot of people. You know, kind of woes me and oh, I know. Oh, we just spoke a lot. Of, we spoke time. a lot. Yeah, we spoke that. a lot on the phone, and it's just like it, it's what it is. You know, it's, it's this is this this is the situation we're in. Yeah, we've got like, on with it. Yeah, I mean, neither you nor me, it's neither hard. you nor me, are earning any money. You know, not no money, uh, and people don't seem to realise that. And no. um, and somebody said to me, "So what are you, what are you going to do then?" And I went, "Well, I'm just going to work online. I'm going to take everything. Hence, I'm doing." Yep. The brilliant thing about this COVID thing, look what it's given me a chance to do. Something like this. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've been wanting to do for years, but never had the time. You know. Yeah. And we're um, the same because we're going to do what on we've been talking about doing online uh, tutorials and online syllabuses. But this is kind of kick started into a Exactly, you've you got know, to do it now. <laughs> we're not, yeah, I know we've got the opportunity now. Obviously we can't get the holders in just now because of the whole social distancing thing, but um yeah. I could probably get the five-year-olds in. They're allowed to not socially distance. <laughs> 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 Aaron can hold the pants. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just imagine Mark Boyle. Stand on that table, you're not telling uh, little, him. Little um, Aaron holding the pads. <laughs> oh, Mark, so Boyle. Cool. Mark Boyle. <laughs> Mark Boyle. <laughs> she's so cool because uh, we had this kind of joke about her the other day because you take her, before lockdown, obviously, you take her to like five-year-old birthday parties and it takes her about 40 minutes to get involved with everybody that's at the party, but she'll walk into one of my fighters' classes and high-five all the guys. <laughs> She's got no fear. When it comes to uh, a martial arts gym, which for most kids is a terrifying place. Yeah, uh, she's like, I met when I first met her, you know, I mean, she would say, come here, I'll show you how to do this jigsaw. Thing. I know. Oh, I know. Do you mind? remember that? Okay. Remember that. Like some sort of bizarre grandfather. <laughs> 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 no. And she goes to the... So, um, yeah. I mean, I knew this would happen because because um, uh, you've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, yes. we're, we're sort of slowly running out of time now. Yeah. Um, but what I, I just want to wrap a couple of things up because I, I, I mean, you'd be up for doing another part on this, wouldn't you? Hundred percent. Yeah. I'd like to talk more about what I'd like to get onto, and I think other people would like to hear it as well. Is this, the the and door training you did with Dan Goro Dan? Yes. Yeah. Um, how you got into that and what you got out of it and what you think uh, it'll give to other people who come to your gym. Uh, uh -huh. I want to talk more about your gym as well. Maybe we can have a little virtual tour of the gym. Yeah, so, no worries. You know, people can can sort of see what, yep. what you've got, mm -hmm. the facilities you've got there, because yep. there's not there's lots of gyms around, but there's not there a is. lot of good gyms, and people don't know right. what they're getting. No, um, and that's... That's true. People don't realise what they get until they go to a decent gym. Yeah. Because they don't know that the gym they're at is not a decent gym. Exactly. Until until they, they don't know until you've got something to compare. Yeah, yeah. And I think if I ask this question of a few people that I know who teach martial arts, they wouldn't have an answer for it because yep. they haven't had any practical experience. All no. they've done is they've opened a gym, they've got a black belt of somebody, yeah. And they got another certificate off somebody. They got another yeah. certificate off somebody. And you talk to them, and they've got this massive gym with hundreds of students, yeah. and they've only been doing it five years. <laughs> and you yeah, go, I know. I know. Uh, I know. Sadly, like you've just said it, the people who come don't know any different. They don't. Whereas, they don't. Until they get something like to podcast, come. Yeah. You know, when I'm doing a podcast, people can yeah. hear you talking about your experiences. Which is not yeah. something you would normally do with students coming in. You know, no, that's oh, right. I'm Graham like no, it. I do this. Very, yeah. And yeah. it's a way of getting it's a way of getting your voice heard. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay, yeah, it's worldwide because it's in there. But more importantly, people will yeah. know that you're in air, which has got quite yeah. a big catchment area because you've got Kilmarnock. And in Glasgow, it's only half an hour away. It's yeah, not I mean you get you get students that travel quite far to train oh, here. Yeah, I know. You know, I know. So, I is, travel all the way up there sometimes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's it, uh, and it's just about getting the message out. So, what I'd yes. like to do in part two is talk about the gym and talk about yep. all of your martial arts as well. But also, uh -huh. we haven't even mentioned the band yet. I know, you know I know, I know. know it's 
you know, you've played bass guitar, guitar. You've played guitar for years, you know? Yeah, bass guitar, yeah. Bass guitar, that's your main yeah. instrument. But you play yeah, in band. I can play, I can play the piano, I can play the guitar. Probably play the, the guitarist in the band will tell you that probably will play the guitar badly. But um, no, I play the guitar. I just, it's, it's the old thing about, um, you know, I wanted to do it, so I just put the hours in and practiced. Yeah. Because you get people coming and saying, "How oh, you're, you're a man of many talents and you play in the band and you, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, you get the martial arts and blah, blah, blah. But I'm only a man of many talents because I put the hours in in the first place to learn That's them. exactly what you've got to do. And I know, you know that your interests are all easy. over the place. So there's stuff like, you know, the survival stuff we've done up in air together. Yeah. Uh, I yep. know all about like the gun club and stuff like that. Weapons, yep. are a thing yep. we could have a good chat about. You know, yep. we edged weapons as well. Really interesting. Yeah. I uh -huh. remember, I remember talking. I think, I think it might have been Mark Boyle that pulled me up on it. And I said, and I was when I was doing one of the first seminars in your place. And I said, yes. like, of course, with the rising, with the the spread and the rise of violent crime using edge weapons, it's really important to learn to be able to. Uh, understand how to defend yourself against an edge weapon if you can at all and i yeah. think it was mark or you might have been said something like what the rise of knife crime we've always had knife crime in scotland <laughs> <laughs> and i, I realized well, yeah of course you have because it's yeah. part of your culture isn't it it's part of your culture as, as i don't mean culture. that i don't mean that in a derogatory sense no I mean, not at all but as glasgow was known for it everybody got stabbed in glasgow yeah, they were they, they had a big big spree of stabbings at the, yeah. the, the back in the day. It was day like fashionable, was, wasn't it? Was, yeah, it was it's like just. Fashionable. I mean, for God's sake, you you're the only men that wear kilts, skirts, right? <laughs> and I'm I'm proud to say half my family's Scottish, so I'm, I don't I like the kilt. I love the kilt. And you you have a skin do in your stock, which is a small. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, I know. You know, it's your right to carry a skin do as well. I know it's uh, <laughs> legal. <Yeah. laughs> well, you all you all got in the club down in Birmingham with skin dudes. And we the, did, 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 I know we did. did every know single one of us got in with skin dudes because they, they didn't let us get through the metal detector. Yeah, and yeah. That, that was the that was the time when I phoned you and you asked me where I was, and we were in. We were, in. <laughs> we're probably not not a um, not a respectable area of Birmingham. Oh, no, no, it was and, a pretty rough part of Birmingham. And I found out where a, you were. With a mist descending like something out of an old Sherlock Holmes film. Oh, it was incredible. I remember going up there. <laughs> thinking, I genuinely thought, don't like leaving my car here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I walked in the pub and you, you lot had already settled yourselves in. <laughs> it, it was one of those pubs where I walked in and, you know, you go, okay, this is, okay, so yeah. Everything went style, especially yeah. with kilts on. Oh, style. even priceless. the guys playing pool stopped. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely bloody priceless. So I want, I want to continue this conversation. Um, no obviously, um, we'll set up another time and date, right? Absolutely. I just want to finish. When I've been doing this, I've been saying, and you've talked a lot about this in a roundabout way. If you had a philosophy about what you do, you know, like Gavin's was, it is what it is, you know. Uh, if you if you could sum it up in a couple of words, you don't have to. If you could sum it up a couple yeah. of words, what would you say about you know what you're doing at the moment? What's happening with your life? Just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah, yeah. Just so, keep going. I mean, I'm. I mean, I don't feel my age. A lot no. of people say no. that you, you don't look your age, and I firmly believe it's the training. Yeah, yeah. When I don't train. I feel my age when I do train. I don't feel my age, so it's because you're alive, just, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, something. just keep going and just and that's the same. You know, I put that philosophy out to the kids, whether it's exams or yeah, you know, football training that they do or or, or the martial arts. Just keep going. Do not Get give up. Like it. Just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> just keep yeah, swimming. You have, I, bet you do, I bet. I bet that's on a t-shirt the next time I see you wearing one. Well, that is now another story. <laughs> it is. And we're going to talk about that as well. We're These are going to be that. a three-part of this. Is. So <laughs> I'm going to have to... We're going to sign off now. It's been great right. having you on board, Graham. Thanks for and having me on, Bob. I look forward to our second part, mate. Take care. Really? Mate. Thanks Cheers. for having me, Bob. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers mate.